this video is intended to shame me. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're good today. We, I, I don't even want to fucking say it. We are going to be talking about all of the book series I am currently reading. And you may think, Megan, why is that? Why do I want to talk about that? It's because, I, <laughs> it's because I'm in the middle of 32 book series. You know what? I'm just going to leave. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna go through every book series I am currently in the middle of. There's 32 of them, and it's made it's made even worse by the fact that in my lifetime I've only completed 11 series. <laughs> <laughs> Well, not in my lifetime, in the past few years of reading, since 2019. Since 2019, I've only completed um, 11, 11 book series. So, <laughs> oh, it's 36. <laughs> I knew it was either 32 or 36, but I went with a lower number in the hope that was true. No, we're in the middle of 36. That's so bad. It's so bad. And the fact is, before we even get into these, I know, I know that in the next couple weeks the next two weeks i'm starting three more series i'm just gonna start three more series i'm gonna be showing you my series tracker and the books are color coded for if i read them in 2019 2020 or 2021 2019 is green 2020 is like a kind of pinky ready and 2021 is a purple and we're going to be going through the series in the order that i've read them so we're going to be starting with the series i've been reading for the longest time and ending with the series that i started most recently now i am actually in november going to be doing a video where you pick what series I make progress in. So in the description box of this video, there is going to be a link to a Google form where you can vote on which of these series you want me to make progress in in a vlog. If you're kind to me, you may pick the series where I've only got one book left so I can finish that series off, but do whatever you want. You've got the power. You can vote on three series each, so you can pick the three series you would most likely me to read, and then in that vlog, I'm gonna read them and I'm very excited. I'm very excited to make some progress in series because that's something I always struggle to do as we as is gonna be evidence. So let's just begin, shall we? So the oldest series, the little series I've been reading the longest, is the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I have read the first two and I literally only read this like last week. <laughs> I need a drink. So I've been reading this series for a long time. I've given both of these like three stars. I didn't really love either of them. And some of you have told me to just DNF this series, but I do not want to. I want to finish this series, partly because I kind of like the covers. I like how they look on my shelves. So I do want to finish the series. But yeah, I've got two more to read in this one and I've been reading this the longest. So it's kind of embarrassing that I haven't finished it yet. Next is Nancy Drew Mystery Stories. I've read the first three of these. You'll notice it says set one. For series like this, where there's like 30 books, I also do this for Hercule Poirot. I split the series into five book installments. So this is the third one. It's the only one I own physically. I read the other two via audiobook. We all know, if you've watched my videos recently, I want to read this whole series via the audiobook but you cannot find them anywhere. The audiobook has just gone poof, sorry I'm gone. I'm gone. But these are just fun, you know, light-hearted amount of mysteries that I do enjoy reading because Nancy Drew is a massive part of my childhood. Then we have got the Diviners series. I read the Diviners, whoa, come on everyone, let's not do this. I read the Diviners in 2019 and then I read Lair of Dreams and Before the Devil Breaks You in 2020 and I have still yet to read the final book, The King of Crows. I have meant to read this many times <laughs> this year. Me trying to finally read this book. What am I gonna do? I'll just manifest it. Might take me a while. But I don't think I've heard a single good review for this book. And it's long. Here's the thing. I want to finish off this series because I have enjoyed parts of it. I gave The Diviners four stars, Lair of Dreams like a 4.5, basically a 5 star. And I gave Before the Devil Breaks You like a 2.5. <laughs> and then I've heard this is even worse than Before the Devil Breaks You. So my motivation for finishing the series just kind of isn't there. 
This is this uh, fantasy series set in 1920s New York. We have the diviners who have kind of these special abilities, these special powers. And I do just kind of want to finish the series, but this is a long book. And the fact that no one has really liked it, just like, it doesn't make me want to read it. But I do want to read it because I want to finish the series off. Then we have got the Wayward Children series by Sean Maguire. I have read up to number six. This is number five and number six. I don't own the first four physically, but I do want to because since I've started reading these physically, I have much more preferred them. I used to listen to the audiobooks and they've all been five stars since I started reading them physically. So I do want to reread the first four physically at some point, but um, money. <laughs> And I do already own, actually, the seventh one, Where the Drowned Girls Go, which I'm so excited for. Uh, this comes out in January next year, so I'm very lucky to have an arc of it. I'm very excited for this one as well, because we're following a character called Cora, who we met in Come Tumbling Down, who I was really interested in. So I'm so excited to read this one. <laughs> I've been dropping so many hints. And yeah, this is one of my favourite series. Listen, this series is going to be going on for like ever. So I am all caught up with this series. I'm not like guilting myself with this one because it's going to go on forever pretty much. I think there's going to be like 20 books. So I'm never going to finish this series. It's never going to get ticked off my list, but I am very excited to read the next installment. Then we have got the Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson. So I have read the first three, Truly Devious, The Vanishing Stair and The Hand on the Wall. And part of me wants to count this as a finished series because the way that this series is going to work from now on is that this is like a trilogy on its own and then the other books are like spin-offs so part of me thinks I should count this as a completed series and then the future books as a different series but it doesn't really make a difference on how many series I'm reading does it so <laughs> the next one is called the box in the woods I'm sure you've heard people speaking about it the problem I have with this series is I have the first three in paperback and I'm not about to buy the hardback <laughs> I want them to match. So the paperback traditionally has been coming out like a year after the hardback comes out. So I'm just always a year late to these books. So I don't want to read the Box in the Woods yet. I think the paperback is due to come out like June next year. So I will get it then and I will make progress in the series then. But right now I'm not going to. Then we have got one of my favorite fantasy series ever. We have got Girls of Paper and Fire and Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nyang. This, oh, this series is one of the series that really got me into reading before I started my channel. I just love this series. I love these girls. We're following these paper girls who are forced to sleep with the king in this fantasy society. And so it's obviously a very difficult book to read about, but it's sapphic. It's beautifully written. The world building is incredible. The last book in this series does come out in November, but I think it's right at the end of November. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to put this on the list for you to vote for. I don't think I'm going to put it on the list, but hopefully I will read it anyway. I don't think this is something that I need you to like vote on for me to read the book because I love the book so, so much. Then another series I cannot make progress in because the next book is not out is... <laughs> Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Now, Miss Lee, just give me a fucking title. That's all I'm asking for. Just give me a fucking title. Please. 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 There's no other series in this list that I need the next book more than I need this. I... How is it okay for her to drop this masterpiece of a book in 2019? Just drop it on us. And then like, no news. And like, she told us. She told us when I went to, I went to the signing for this book. Um, hold up a second to Megan. Um, <laughs> she told us when I went to it, she wanted this to be a seven book series. And you're making me wait like three years at least for the next one. I'm going to be old. I'm going to have like 10 year old children by the time. <laughs> By the time the last book in this series is coming out. Anyway, Alex Stern, Set at Yale, Murder Mystery Fantasy, incredible series, amazing. Don't know when the next book is coming out. We don't have a title. We don't have an estimated date of release. I'm just like, Miss Lee Budugo, please. Please. I'm begging you. I'm begging. I need a scrap of something after the way this book ended. Next is my next set of Urquiparo books. This is slightly out of order because we're going to get into books that I started now in 2020 but obviously this I read in 2021 because I started Urquiparo overall in 2020 but I've read the first five. So this is number six. The next one is Peril at End House which I don't own. I do love a bit of Urquiparo. I love a bit of Agatha Christie. I'm making my way through them slowly. I find with Miss Agatha we're very hit or miss. Like I'm never going to call her one of my favourite authors because 
because I've given loads of her books five stars. I've given loads like two stars, one star. So like we're very not on the same page. Okay, right, next let's quickly fly through some middle grade series. I started these all in the same vlog where I started three middle grade series and then I haven't made progress in any of them. I started all these last year. First we've got the Sinclair's Mysteries. I read The Clockwork Sparrow. I do own the next one, The Jeweled Moth. I don't think I'm gonna vlog reading this series but this is like a mystery series set in Edwardian England, set in this department store called Sinclair's. It's very cute. Um, this is actually the one I rated lowest out of all of the books in that video but I do want to continue with these series because they're cute middle grades and I feel like they are books that I could read outside of reading vlogs just for my own enjoyment. But yeah, I love this kind of era. I love middle grade, I love mystery, so I do wanna continue with this one. I also started A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. This is like three sisters with an ancient curse and then working together as friends and as sisters to solve it. I don't own the second one to this yet, but I really love this one. This one was so magical and whimsical. I also started <laughs> Pages and Co by Tilly and the Book Wanderers. At this point during editing, I started to get overwhelmed at just how many series I'm currently reading. Girl, I just can't take this. It's too much. Give my pocketbook, I'm leaving. I do own Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales, the next one in the Pages and Co series. This is about this girl who can like walk into books and like books can emerge into the world around her. It's just magical again. So I do really want to make progress in these middle grades. This is complete evidence of my problem. I often start series for vlogs and I don't continue them. So hopefully I'll make progress in some of these middle grade series soon because I need to. Okay, next we've got a series that I'm almost finished. I'm hoping maybe to finish it in the next couple months. It's Binti and I've read the first two. I've read Binti and Home and I do own The Night Masquerade. I just read these as ebooks. They're literally only like 100 pages long. I could literally read The Night Masquerade tonight if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. This is like science fiction fantasy. I don't really want to say too much about what it's about because I am so far removed from the first book that I definitely have forgotten what's a spoiler. I feel like a lot is a spoiler because they're only like a hundred pages so like what the fuck am I going to talk about? <laughs> Crazy kind of plots, very very interesting and I own the last one so I could, I could finish this series very soon if I wanted to. Next is a very exciting series I'm very excited to make progress in. It's not a series you have to read in any kind of order but it's the um, Forgotten Women series which I love. I've only read the leaders but I do own the writers now. This is non-fiction about forgotten women throughout history. It's got like illustrations about them all and it just has a couple you know, lines about their lives. And I just love this series. I love learning about forgotten women throughout history. I just love learning about forgotten women and these stories that should have been told, but because of like patriarchy and things like that, they weren't and these women were forgotten. So I love this series. There's four in total. Um, obviously I've read the first one, have this one and then there's two more. Next you're all gonna yell at me but it's the Stranger Dreamer duology by Lenny Taylor. There's a few series on this list that I said <laughs> when I read them. I, I need, need to read, to read the next book in series straight away. away. I need, need to read, read this next book straight away. And then I didn't and this is one of them. Be a perfect I can't, thing. I can't, I've tried it and I failed. Why does everyone I expect can't. it then? I'm sure you know this is following like Laszlo Strange in this magical, mythical world. This is a super popular series on booktube. I really enjoyed Stranger Dreamer. I loved how beautiful the writing style was, but the plot like dragged a little bit in the middle for me, but the, the beginning and the ending were five stars and then the middle was like three stars. So I think I gave it a four star overall. So yeah, I do own Moose of Nightmares, but it's wrapped up still. <laughs> Remember wrapped up? I haven't done that in a couple months. But yeah, need to read Muse of Nightmares at some point because then this is a duology and then I've finished it. I just realized I've been speaking for way too long. We need to hurry up. Should we speed it up a little bit? Yeah. I'm gonna like race through some of these because otherwise this video is gonna be like a hundred years long. We have got the, is it Green Hollow duology? Yeah, by Emily Tesh. I have read Silver in the Wood. I haven't read Drown County. Another one, feel free to shame me for because it's, only this long. It's only this long and I haven't read it and it's one of my favourite covers. For some reason I love this cover. I think it's so eerie, so different. This is like fantasy about these guys living in this world and it's interesting. I've never really read anything else like this. Then we have The Themis Files by Sylvain Nouvelle. I gave the first one, Sleeping Giants, five stars. I listened to the audiobook and that meant I bought the audiobooks and the physical books for books two and three. So I have literally no excuse because I have the audiobooks and the physical books because I love this series, well the start of this series so much. It is these files so it's all told through interviews and kind of description logs but mostly interviews with our characters and it's about these sleeping giants or these kind of 
robotic creatures that would be impossible for humans to have made being discovered and like body parts being scattered around the earth and it's incredible the audiobooks are amazing i would really recommend you listen to the audiobooks this is another one i have no excuse for because i have both of them and it's one that i have said to myself i was going to prioritize getting to and then Cal surprise I haven't. Then two more series that I can't make any progress in I've read up to date. We have got The Singing Hill Cycle by Nevo. I have read The Empress of Sword and Fortune and When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain. The next one is Into the Riverlands. It comes out early next year sometime. These are beautiful, beautiful novellas. If you like novellas, if you like short books, these ones by Tor are like my number one recommendation. I think some of the most beautiful writing ever. I'm not gonna get them all out, but we've obviously got the Heartstopper graphic novel series. I think number five is the final one that comes out out next year I've read one to four I don't know how I'm gonna act when <laughs> when number five comes out I think I'll cry because that's it then but then the series is finished that's one series I don't want to finish I want that series to go on forever I feel good I feel bad I feel happy I feel sad I feel great I feel compassionate I feel kind I feel courageous and then another one which I can't make any progress in is the middle game series the second one for this is coming out next year it's called seasonal fears and I am very nervous for this one because I don't feel like this should be a series like middle game was a perfect standalone I read it thinking it was gonna be a standalone and then it turns out we're getting another one and I'm like I'm not so sure about that. It makes me so nervous. Like this should be a standalone. I don't know how Sean Maguire is gonna do it, but I trust Sean and Maguire in everything. So ah, I wanna scream. Like this should, okay. <laughs> and then the last series I started in 2020 is <laughs> the Poppy War series by RF Quang. I do own books two and three. But look how big they are. This is the reason I have not made progress in this series. Dragon Republic and The Burning God, they are so long, they are so scary to me that I just don't want to make progress in this series. I just don't want to do it. Ah! I feel like I need to finish these at some point, but like I kind of don't want you to vote for these for the vlog because, the, you know, this is so long. Imagine me trying to... That's what stops me. I just can't imagine trying to read this right now. Long books in me, like, aren't necessarily working out. Okay, and now we're into series that I started this year. There's a few of these I can't make any progress in because obviously some of them are new releases. One is The Year of the Witching by Alexis N Henderson. The second one of this series has now been confirmed to be coming out. It's gonna be called The Dawn of the Coven and I'm very, very excited about it, but I don't know when it's coming out because on all the release things it says like December this year but we haven't even had a cover reveal so I don't believe that. I don't know when it's going to be coming out. This is this amazing combination of historical and fantasy and it's set around this cult, this religious cult and it was just oh this amazing horror, this slow burn horror with feminist themes. I loved it but yeah I can't make any progress in it so it's not on me. This isn't my fault. <laughs> now the next one is my fault because remember... <laughs> Remember when I said there's a few books, there's a few series in this video that I said I need to finish this series straight away when I read it. This is one of them. It is the uh, Broken Earth trilogy. So the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin. I own, because I asked for them, I think for my birthday, books two and three. Because I remember saying to myself, this series is so confusing and big brained and like requires so much thinking and remembering of things that I need to read books two and three straight away. And guess what I didn't do? Guess what I didn't do, everyone? I have not read them. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all. I literally had no idea what the book was about because everyone struggles to describe this. Just know it's a very clever fantasy that requires a lot of brain and um, it's very confusing. <laughs> One of my patrons just finished the series and said that The Stone Sky, the last one, requires the most amount of thought of anything yet. Um, yeah, I'm really going to like find a way to reacquaint myself with what happens in this before I start the rest of this series. Let's just quickly go through the ones very fast that I also can't make any progress in because I've read up to date. We've got Legendborn by Tracy Dion. Uh, this is this fantasy, again, set like in a school environment. It's an Arthurian retelling. Now, I didn't love this this book for the vast majority of it I didn't really enjoy it but the ending was very interesting and I love the direction that the book went in so I'm hoping that I'm gonna love the next one then we have got Amari and the Knight Brothers I am so excited for Amari and the great game to come out the second one this is 
Yeah. This is one of my favorite middle grades I have ever read. Like I think it's this amazing school setting, magical school setting. It's got you know a game to it. And Mari is such an interesting character. So yeah, I feel like I will read the second one pretty fast when it does come out. And then one I just started is A Song of Rate and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. This is like a West African inspired fantasy. We're following these two main characters who want to kill each other and um i believe this is a duology as well so hopefully i will read the second one quickly when it comes out to finish this series and take it off my list oh and also we have got a history of what comes next by sylvain nouvelle this is this really imaginative historical retelling of the space race it was so interesting as you can tell sylvain nouvelle is probably my favorite sci-fi writer the second in this series which is called until the last of me i think comes out next year so another one that i think i will read quite quickly i feel like this is a duology as well but it's very strange this book it has like no speech no speech marks in it and it's very weird not a lot of people love this but i really enjoyed it am i quirky Silly. One of the series I'm most excited to finish is the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I have read the first two, you'll know this is one of my favourite series I've started this year. I've read Good Girl's Guide to Murder and Good Girl Bad Blood. I do own As Good As Dead, the third one. It's sitting over there. I this is my favourite YA murder mystery I have ever read. I think it's an amazing YA murder mystery that you need to read. It's just so imaginative. It's told like through this mixed media and um, yeah, I've owned the last book for like a couple, about a month now and I'm kind of ashamed I I haven't got to it so like <laughs> I do want to read that soon but I don't currently have any video plans to so like <laughs> oh we have got the raven boys we've got the raven cycle I started it this year I didn't love the raven boys but I, I already own the second one and I've owned it for a long time so we're gonna continue on with this series at some point I feel like I could love it because my problem with this was that I felt like this was just setting up the rest of the series, but I'm hoping we'll get into this kind of whimsical, crazy, fantastical world in book two. So I'm hoping for great things, but I did not love the Raven Boys. Then I started Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. Again, a bit of a disappointment. I didn't enjoy this as much as Strange the Dreamer. Yeah, I didn't like the storyline. I didn't like the romance. I didn't like how it ended. But I do, again, I want to continue on the series because I love Lainey Taylor. Um, so one of my patrons just actually recently gifted me Days of Blood and Starlight, which is the second one. I do love these new UK covers. I think they're really, really pretty. A series I've actually made really good progress in this year is the Brown Sisters romances. So I have read the first two, a life Chloe Brown and Take Hint Danny Brown. So I've only got the last one to read, Act Your Age, Eve Brown. My mum has actually just read all of these. <laughs> she really loved them. I've read this series quite quickly because they're so easy to get into. These romances for these sisters, they're so cute. They're great contemporary romances. So yeah, I feel like again, this is one that I may read soon. Then a series I've spoken about quite a bit that I'm making progress through is The Lady Hardcastle Mysteries by T.E. Kinsey. This is my favourite, probably like cosy historical mystery series. I've been listening to the audiobooks, but I think I am going to start um getting the the physical books as well they're only 4.99 for the physical book and obviously i've got the audiobooks free on script i just love these audiobooks so because both of the first two have been five stars for me i feel like this is a series that's going to just continue to be five stars for me so i think i am going to start getting the physical books as well but obviously listening along because the audiobooks are incredible like they remind me a little bit of how good the strange case of the alchemist daughter audiobooks are not quite as good but a really good narrator who just brings this like story of these cozy mysteries between a lady and her maid to life. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular. Two that I started in the same video. We have got uh, The Honjin Murders by Shoshi Yokomizo and Before the Coffee Gets Hold by Toshikazu Karaguchi. This only has one other book, so another one that hopefully I will read soon-ish so that I could tick it off my list. And this one is part of like a kind of Erky Poro length detective series but only this one and the Inugami clan have been translated to English. The last series I started was Jade City by Fonda Lee, the, the Greenbone saga I think it's called. Yes. I enjoyed this but I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. I think I gave this like a 3.5 stars. It's this very rich amazing fantasy series but it just dragged a little bit for me more than I wanted it to but I still really really enjoyed it. Um, It was a very amazing interesting book that I'm very excited to carry on and finish the last two books in the series. I think Jade Legacy is just about to come out, but Jade War is definitely out, so I could make progress in the series if I wanted to, but uh... 
<laughs> so there we have it. That is all of the series that I am currently part way through. Um, my floor is a mess with all of these books. This kind of just like actually visually makes me realize what a what a situation I've got myself into. Um, <laughs> But hopefully I will make some progress in these series towards the end of this year. I would love to get a few off my list, but I know I'm just going to be starting new ones. So like, it's a problem. It's a real, real problem. I need to get some of the books off this list. But I only have one book left in the series and just finish it. So you have the power for that vlog next month to decide which of these series I am going to make some progress in. Again, I will leave the link down below where you can vote on them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I feel like it's gonna be quite a long one. I've gotta go and race and edit it now because I want it to go up this evening. If you've gone to the end of this video, comment the shocked face emoji because I'm sure we're all shocked and ashamed of me that I've got triple the amount of series to finish that I have finished ever. I love you very much. Thank you so much for watching. You're amazing. I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.